propose that you travel with me to meet the countries of the European Union and the citizens who make them happy. Ready for one of our destinations? Okay, let's go! Germany, whose capital is Berlin, is the most populous country in the European Union, with 84 million inhabitants. Germany has been Europe's leading economic power and the world's fourth largest economy since 2007. Marked by the Second World War, Germany is deeply committed to the European integration and pacifist ideologies since 1945. What I think is that the history of Germany as Nazi Germany still has like a great impact on us, not because um, you can still see the structures that was, were implemented, uh, planted by Hitler, but because um, we talk about it a lot, like in school, it's topic of every class, every time and all over again, and we draw like some kind of responsibility out of it um, to make it better next time and to avoid having this situation come up again. So when politicians uh, talk about what we, what role we have in the European Union, they also like mention the Holocaust and say that uh, because of Germans, uh, Germany's history, we have like this kind of responsibility to make it better and to show that we changed. Because there's also some, it's still some kind of shame or guilt in the German people, for sure. Um, because many of us, without having anything to do directly with like the Second World War. We have like ancestors um, that have fought in the war, that have been on the side of Hitler, of the Nazis and have been part of it. For example, for me, it's like I wonder how I should feel about my ancestors because I mean, I feel bad for my grand grandmother because she lost her husband in the war, but still her husband fought for the Nazis. So uh, having having sympathy for your own family members because they were the ones suffering from the war as well, but also being happy that many Germans, well, many Nazis were falling in the war because it kind of meant that the war was going to be lost by the Nazis and that Nazis did not take over the whole world and Europe. So it's kind of a feeling of ambiguity um, between those two. And I think many Germans today um, know that feeling because sometimes when we're like in in foreign countries we get asked a lot like so your grandparents were nazis or what and i don't know i don't know what to say because probably they were but that doesn't change anything about my presence in germany now but it still relates to kind of a feeling of shame and of guilt um so it's very hard to be proud of the country we live in like like there's always something is happening and it always is being put into relation with the Second World War or the, the time of the um, uh, national, national Socialism, uh, Nazi uh, thing. It's like a, like a blueprint that you always need to check. Like I, li I like to think or I like to hope that it's something that makes us better as a people um, because we're trying to like avoid stuff like that, obviously. <laughs> From 1949 to 1990, as a result of sanctions imposed by the winners of the Second World War and the Cold War between West and East, Germany was split into two parts. It was symbolized by the Berlin Wall, whose demarcation are still visible today. Checkpoint Charlie was the most famous crossing point during the Cold War. It was from here that you could obtain a daytime visa to cross from East to West Berlin. You can still see its reproduction in Berlin today. West Germany, officially known as the Federal Republic of Germany, was a democratic capitalist country, allied with the USA and Western Europe. East Germany, officially the German Democratic Republic, was a communist authoritarian country under the influence of the Soviet Union. To help carry the cost of the German reunification, which took place in 1990, the Solidarity Short Charge was introduced in 1995. Since 2021, 90% of taxpayers have been exempted of the Solidarity Short Charge. This exemption led to a 50% reduction in revenue from the reunification Solidarity Short Charge. As our interviewees pointed out, Germany reunification remains a real contemporary challenge for Germany. 
um, talking about West and Eastern Germany is still impacting people nowadays. So on my side, I'm lucky in that sense, I was in the West, so there was no big impact for us. Um, with no restrictions, we could always travel. So I think for us, it was very easy to live. But other people who were in the East still are annoyed and still concerned about um, being behind in that sense. In general, the, that the two states were put together was a great thing and I think all people would say that. But the first time for the people of the East were very hard because many factories like closed or many institutions that were belongs to the DDR um, were first closed and yeah, some were never open again and many people lost their jobs and they had to get to know a new like institution and a new yeah like state form and new money so they just had an, uh, other money in the east than in the west and there were so many new things well if you're in berlin the town that was formally separated you can see the difference so clearly if you're on one side of berlin or the other side because you have all the big companies located on the western side and uh, the architecture is way prettier on the west side and then in the eastern side there are uh, less companies and so it's like kind of a circle that keeps renewing itself because you don't have the companies in the east side that's why people don't have good workplaces that's why they have low income and because they have low income they can't consume and that's why the companies don't move there um, talking about eastern germany which is still also undeveloped. For example, housing is undeveloped. Um, the cities are more poor in that sense, have less income, and pay less rent, of course, well, but also have less infrastructure. Every time when you like drive through Germany from the north to the west, you can immediately see when you're in the east side because it's just country roads. All the Autobahnen, they are uh, like the main roads in Germany and they are mostly in the west side and in the east side they are not developed that much. They try to um, bridge the gap, but it takes time, and so it's still impacting people nowadays. On the east side, they try to get their problems here, um, because the normal parties that are like in the middle, um, they don't listen to those concerns. So it is, it's been 30 years, and the country is united in theory, but uh, practically, it's not. It's it remains separated. I think I. If you look at the reunification and the, the fall of the Berlin Wall, um, like for me, I was two years old, I think, at that time. So I only know, or I should only know one united Germany. But actually, I still, like when we talk about, we talk about the old uh, parts of Germany, which is the West, and the new parts of Germany, which is the East, there's this this new part and I've like I've I've never I've except for Berlin I've never been anywhere there it's it's like a cultural mindset I guess like probably from your parents you have some ideas about how the eastern part of Germany looks like and how the people are and stuff like that so you have some prejudices and um, this is actually something that I'm realizing just now that I have <laughs> I think for all the people of the east it would be great if they trying to get to know a little better people of the West and people of the West trying to get to know a better people of the East. So Being split in two parts, uh, which also splits up people in two parts, often between East and West, um, where people grew up very differently. So the people in the West are still, or, or the most people could understand a little more the West side of the world, like the US and the yeah, European Union and I think there are still some people in the East that could understand before the Ukraine war the East side of the world like Russia um, better than the West side and I have to say there is also a thing that most people don't know or like forget that in the East part of Germany women were working at the same time as uh, men were working and in the West part the women most of the time when they get children they were uh, stay at home and like cook and yeah be like a housewife um what isn't um wrong but it's a difference
Immigration to Germany is a demographic phenomenon that has shaped the country's history since the 1950s. The non-national population in Germany is composed by other EU citizens at 5% and by third country nationals at 7%. Among them, the most numerous are Turks, followed by Poles, Syrians and Romanians. In the 1960s, uh, there was a guest worker agreement between the Turkish and German government. Nowadays, Turkish people are the biggest ethnic uh, minority in Germany and uh, German people, for especially uh, young people, use uh, Turkish uh, language, Turkish uh, words in their uh, German uh, sentences. And uh, you can also see uh, that Turkish people are in the politics, uh, in the government, uh, they are also Turkish people. Uh, but there are still uh, bad sides uh, of the integration in uh, Germany uh, of the Turkish people because you can see that uh, many uh, poor people are uh, Turkish uh, migrants. Germany is one of the founding members of the European Union. Thanks to its size and economic dynamism, Germany has regularly acted as a driving force behind Europe. Germany is the biggest contributor to the European Union budget, accounting for 26% of national contributions in 2021. And Germany benefits from the advantages of the European market. The most important sectors of Germany's economy in 2020 were industry and in particular the automotive sector. Intra-European Union trade accounts for 53% of Germany's exports and for 64% of Germany's imports. So what do our interviewees think about the European Union? Are they in favour of the European Union? Yes, I'm in favour of the European Union. Yes, I'm absolutely in favour of the European Union. I am very much in favour of the European Union. Through this um, organisation we could understand each other better and work together. Because we can import and export easily. Uh, which is I think very important. Secondly, I travel a lot and having no visa, having no, no, no issues on the border is amazing for me. I mean, I studied in Holland, in France, um, without any issues whatsoever, paying the same fee. So I think that's many benefits you have in the European Union. So the European Union has, from my uh, perspective, good and bad, perspect uh, bad aspects to it. Um, generally, I like the idea of many countries coming together and working as a whole. Um, I don't know though why it has to be only Europe, why we exclude people from it, why we exclude other countries from the outside and don't try to work with other countries as well that are not in the borders of Europe. I think that the processes in the uh, European Union are not ideal for the um, citizen to understand and uh, if you elect the European Parliament and they basically have just very little power while the European Commission has so much power, they have been elected in their home country so it's kind of democratic but it's to me it's too complicated and it's not really straightforward for the citizen and it, it feels so abstract. I feel like I'm German but I would like to feel like I'm European. Auf Wiedersehen. Come and visit us. It's a great country. <laughs> <laughs>